Hey there. So today talking about core wounds, this is um, a really important topic and one that I deal with a lot in my work, um, one that I've dealt with a lot in my healing. And we usually have one or, or more. Um, most of us would have one or more. It's not um, anything to be worried about if you have more than you know a couple. It depends on what's in the background of your childhood. So core wounds, I'll give you some examples of core wounds. So abandonment, neglect, betrayal, um, unworthiness, uh, trauma and abuse. So that can be a physical trauma, emotional trauma, sexual trauma, um, just that kind of traumatic event that could be one event or ongoing in your childhood, potentially even. Usually these things start from childhood, but we can we can have other events that happen later in life, which can definitely etch in and embed uh, a core wound or create a, an offshoot of a wound. And um, unwanted rejection, they are, so you get the idea, they're these really, really deep emotional wounds that go so deep that they then create these um, responses in our life, these behaviors where we have you know self-sabotaging behaviors they're very unconscious behaviors um we act out of unworthiness we don't feel that we deserve happiness that we're unlovable we don't put ourselves out there or when we do put ourselves out there maybe it's a bravado facade kind of scenario so the core wounds then you know they run this kind of default program and then we've got what i call um, perpetuating factors. And in my work, I go and help you find perpetuating factors. So things that have happened along the journey that have perpetuated that wound. So decisions that you've made, energy that you've taken on along the way, agreements that you've made in a sense. Um, even if something happened to you as a very young child, if someone says something to you that was that's really harsh and your energy field takes it on, it's because you've already got that core wound, that undercurrent so that frequency then is a match and you've taken that on and then you've perpetuated that wound further and further. So it uh, further victimizes us. And in my work, I'm trying to help you get to the higher um, learning of this so that we can unravel that victimization and actually come and find the higher purpose of these core wounds and to gain more mastery. Now, when we're doing deep soul work, we're working with core wounds and, and we can't avoid the core wound work. I'm, that's the way I've always worked. It's the way I've seen people succeed. When we when we bypass the core wound work, we're bypassing um, the light of our soul. As Rumi said, where the wound is, this is where the light comes in. So this is where we find our brightest, brightest light. It's at our darkest wound point. This is what we're often here to master. So we will have a core wound as a way to either um, clear and um, resolve ancestral stuff in the line and the lineage and we we choose as souls to be born into these families often to get this core wound and we're here to master that so it's actually part of our soul purpose quite often um, of course there are people that don't wake up to that realization and they stay victimized and they've had heinous things happen along the journey there's many 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 perpetuating factors and it's very challenging. It's not easy. When we start to get to the root cause, the core wound, we can then work backwards from that and try and clear all the perpetuating factors. Or sometimes in my work, I, I start with the perpetuating factors and work back then to the to the core wound. It depends on the person's psyche and consciousness and, and how much they're able to manage. But either way, we can go gentle or we can pull the skin off in one go depending on what people need to do but we do need to face these wounds these wounds and all the perpetuating factors I look at all of these as like a, a pattern within our field this is called a samskara these are our energetic imprints they're our belief systems and they are uh, glitches in the program that run the show our wounding so when we're acting in our human wounding or some might call it the ego this is when we're acting out of our samskaras we're not letting our soul light come in we are here to, to clear the wounding and let the higher self come into embodiment. And when we're acting all the time from our wounding, we're not letting that soul light come in and shine. 
So underneath all of the density of the samskaras, underneath all the hucha, as the Andean um, shamans say, that that dense energy, it's not bad, it's just heavy and there's light underneath it, but the light can't come and reveal itself until the wounding has been confronted. So we really do have to confront our shadow. And um, and this is how we, we, we embody our soul light. Sometimes you feel like you're taking a step back when you do this because you become more conscious and aware of all the um, deprecating self-talk and the judgments that you put on others and the criticisms that you have about the world. And so when you start to observe, you feel like you're going backwards, but you're not, you're just, you're just growing in your consciousness and your awareness and you're, you're making what's unconscious conscious, sorry, so that you can actually run the show from your higher self, not from your ego wounding anymore.